This evening, um, I was actually down here in the area last month and had addressed the group over at the uh, fire department about coming in and trying to set up and structure um, something primarily with life insurance. The mayor asked me to pull together some quotes for uh, the possibility of health insurance to present tonight as well. So um, basically, without um, sitting down and actually meeting with each one on an individual basis, um, I had to kind of generically ballpark uh, some of the numbers. I know that the oldest number that the secretary told me that they had as far as age-wise was 59-year-old um, male, um, non-tobacco, and at a standard class rating on that, and presuming that he probably had a wife um, that was similar in age, it would be a range from anywhere um, of $457 a month 
to $514 a month, and that depended on whether you went for a 100% coverage plan or whether you went with um, an HSA, which is a health savings account type plan, or a copay type plan. And so basically, based on all of those different situations, um, you're going to have a lot of varying factors going into that price, into that cost. Obviously, the most expensive end of that is going to be the 100% coverage. Um, with some of the copays, you would obviously have those um, a little cheaper, a little more competitive. Um, also, we offered a, um, a flexible spending account as well. Now, I'll try to keep this as brief as I can, but basically, um, a flexible spending account, <coughs> primarily when we're working with um, businesses, other bigger companies, they're helping pay in to a portion of like a, an account on that to where the um, associates would have access to be able to use for uh, medical related um, expenses. On the, at the end of their employment, they would actually have that money pulled back. I know for my wife and myself, we actually have the health savings account because no matter where I would go or where she would go, all of the money that we have accumulated would continue to go with us. So um, for someone as young as uh, 28 years old, 27, 28 years old, it was, uh, it was as little as $258 a month with two kids. Also, I wanted to add that cost that I had given you a second ago included vision and dental benefits in that as well. Do you guys have any direct questions as far as, I know I've thrown out a lot of information. Um, basically, the way that this would work, there's a couple different ways to go here. The approach that I was coming at when I met last week was to sit down on more of a one-on-one -on -one basis. We have uh, three or four major companies that we're dealing with on the health insurance side of that. I was trying to sit down on a one-on-one -on -one basis because I'm finding that as a lot of um, cities and a lot of businesses are doing away with their coverage, they're actually paying their employees a few more dollars on the hour and saying, we'll gladly pay the extra and you go out and find your own coverage. That's creating a good situation for those that are healthy without many pre-existing conditions <coughs> and it's kind of creating a nightmare for the others. But we do have a company to cover those that are going to be a little more of the high risk end with some of the other issues. So, um, As I said, the numbers that I've given you here now are going to be with the presumption of that everybody's healthy, in good shape, and that there's no major health issues on that. So, Did you guys have any direct questions for me with any of that? This employee only or family plan? This would be a family plan. And this would be something that, like I said, it's very specifically so that if you left the company, you could continue to keep this and not turn around and have to go on COBRA or lose your coverage when you go down the road. That's exactly the reason that I was looking at um, doing this. I know um, one of the ladies that I'm working with has been dealing with a few other of the volunteer fire departments where um, the fellows don't have a structure in place for that type of coverage. So that was the exact reason for coming down here to visit the local guys here as well. So, I don't have any questions. I would like to see what we already have and compare. Well, we definitely need a quote from both people that are speaking tonight. And I think the only way to be right with this is to sit down with people. And sure, sure. And you guys just have to make arrangements to do that. Sure. We're looking at something. Yeah. Well, and that's why I said, based on the information, without getting too nitty gritty with just calling in and asking for all the information from the secretary, that's where, uh, from the approach that I'm coming at, it would take, as you say, individually sitting down with each person and then getting the details to be most um, on, on the spot with that. So, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next on the agenda, Ms. Melissa Schreiber from Burnham Flower. Hello, thanks for having me. All right, let me get this set up here. Okay. Sure. Okay. 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 Burnham Flower? I have it. Do you have it? Oh, we're the 
largest insurer of municipalities in the state of Ohio. I hope I've got enough copies here. I didn't. Just enough. Right. We are a brokerage firm. <coughs> we represent unit, like I said, municipalities. We're the largest insurer of municipalities in the state of Ohio. We represent Otarma and PEP, um, Ohio Township Association Risk Management Authority, um, and the public entity pool of Ohio. We also now represent uh, PEBA, which is the Public Employee Benefit Association. We're going to be pooling all public sector together to try to come up with better rates. Unfortunately, with health insurance, it's a little bit harder to pool everybody like you could with your property and casualty insurance because property and casualty covers accidents, health insurance covers everything. Um, and unfortunately, we all get older and sicker. So um, in this packet um, is the first page is a reminder that we're your broker. Uh, we do not work for a specific carrier. We go out to all the carriers in Ohio that is available to small groups, and we basically bargain on your behalf. Um, we are a team, it's not just me. Sean Sprouse and myself are in our Columbus office and we travel all over the state of Ohio. On that first page, the two people at the bottom are your service reps, they are day-to-day -day contacts. If you have questions about your, your medical, your dental, um, any lines of coverage that you have with us, you would call them. They could help you um, work through any claims issues, if you have a question about your explanation of benefits, etc. Um, so you do get a whole service team with us. Um, the next page is a snapshot of some of, some of the carriers we work with. We're not limited to this. These are the major players in the game in the state of Ohio. Um, this is a small group and a large group list. The small group players in the game are four main carriers. You've got Anthem, which is who you're currently with, Medical Mutual of Ohio, United Healthcare, and Aetna. Um, they are the four main players in the small group market. And I had you guys complete applications. Uh, for everybody that is currently on your Anthem plan, I believe you were on a rich, now stop me if I'm wrong, you were on a rich, was it the zero or the 250? It was? Oh, yeah. Okay, so then it was the 500. Because Anthem just changed, Anthem just changed their plans as of September 1st of last year. Well, they've mapped it to the BA1, which is, well, let me see that. They mapped it, well, I might not tell you. They mapped it to the, they changed everybody's plans. I think this is the same thing I've got right here. Yeah, it is. And um, forgive me, I wasn't your broker last year, so I don't know what you had last year. <clears throat> okay, nevertheless, you're now, as of April 1st, Sunday, you're now on a $500 deductible plan. Um, $500 is the employee's responsibility. It is an 80-20 coinsurance coverage limit, meaning after that first $500 is met, the carrier will pay 80% of each bill after that, and the employee is responsible for 20%. Um, remaining up to a maximum of a thousand dollars single, two thousand family. So the most that you would pay out of one year's in one year's time out of your pocket towards your deductible for your plan is a thousand dollars. You do have the twenty dollar primary care visit and a fifty dollar specialist visit. So anytime you go to the doctor um, or you see your specialist, if it's whatever's covered in the four walls of that exam room, it would be covered under that copay, and your subject or your deductible would not be. It would not be subject to your deductible. If you go to the hospital and you have an inpatient procedure, an outpatient procedure, that would be subject to your deductible. Um, I had you guys complete applications. I took you out to the various carriers in the market. Um, your projected Anthem increase is a 20% increase. You were paying for the three people on your plan with two spouses and two children. You were paying 35.22, and the increase is taking you up to 42.26. Medical Mutual came in with a similar plan for $53.83. Nippon Life, which is a new company in Ohio market, um, came in at $95.40. We don't want to do that. Aetna came in at $77.36. That's for the whole group per month. So unfortunately, um, the medical conditions in the group are preventing us from getting a better rate from another carrier in the marketplace. The good thing, though, is <clears throat> you're still on a low deductible. The answer that we have found to help 
townships, cities, villages keep that premium low and affordable is to increase the deductible to a very high amount and help fund behind that the difference between what that $500 you are used to and that new higher, say, $2,500 deductible plan. $2,500 is a lot to um, push onto an employee. And um, it's called an HRA, Health Reimbursement Arrangement. It's the same concept as an HSA, a health savings account. But when you're dealing with um, elected officials now, are there elected officials on the plan? No. no. Okay. When you're dealing with public sector, HSAs are usually not the best idea. HSAs are employee-owned accounts that go along with a qualified high deductible health plan. If you fund, as the village, if you help fund some of that deductible into an HSA, if the employee were to leave, they take that money with them. <coughs> they use it for their deductible or not. An HRA is funding part of that deductible, helping the employee out as long as they're an employee of the village. It's an employer-owned account. It is always the village's money. It's unless there's a claim that has been subject to the deductible, then you would reimburse out of that account for that deductible expense only. If the employee were to leave um, employment of the village, the money stays with the village, and it just rolls over every year in your account. You can use it for your general fund, you can use it for your road fund, your fire fund. Um, it's always the village's money, but it's there as an added benefit to help the employees. So if you flip the page to this premium comparison spreadsheet, I compiled for you. On the left is your current plan with Anthem. And as you can see at the bottom, you've got that your old premium at 3521 compared to your renewal premium of 4227. And that's for that $500 deductible plan. If you increased just your out of pocket, you kept your deductible the same on the next column. It says the Anthem Blue Access D2. It's a $500 deductible, so that's that would stay the same. It's an 80-20 coverage again, but your out-of-pocket, as you can see, that out-of-pocket goes up from 1000 to 3000 which means after $500 is met, the employee will be responsible for 20% of each hospital bill up to a maximum of 3000 So 20% of this bill, 20% of that bill, that's not that bad. It does lower your premium about $200 a month. What I would suggest is one of the further right plans on these, on these columns, the Blue Access D4 or the Luminos HSA E1 plan. These are $2,500 deductibles, so right off the bat, if they, somebody was to have a baby or, um, God forbid, have a heart attack, end up in the hospital and have to have a hospital stay or an outpatient procedure, it's something that's subject to the deductible. $2,500 would be their responsibility up front. If you were to fund $2,000 of that $2,500, leaving them with that $500 they're used to, but you fund the two thousand in case you know in case it's needed, it could actually save you money because as you can see the premium drops down. Any questions so far? If you flip the page, so I want you to flip two pages for me. I did a cost analysis. So this premium is three forty thirty four fifty nine that includes the funding amount too? No. Well, yes. Yes and no. That's why I want you to flip two pages and I'm going to show you here. I'm just going to... Uh, yeah, the second cost analysis. There's two cost analysis in there. The second cost analysis right here, it's at the top, it says 2500 HRA HSA cost analysis. So we're all looking at the same thing. 2500 HSA cost analysis. Okay. I put in your renewal premium of 4227. 4227. That's what you're going to start paying in 4227. That's what you're going to pay start paying as if you don't do it, if you don't do anything That's what you are going to pay start paying as if you do not do if you do not do anything today if you take, if you bump your deductible to that $2,500 deductible plan, <coughs> it takes your premium down to $2,849. That's a monthly savings of $1,378, an annual savings of $16,536. So that savings right there is what you're going to, re regardless, if you make no changes today, you're going to send $4,200 to Anthem every month for this plan you currently have. So instead of sending $4,200, send $2,800. Take that savings that you're not that you're no longer sending to Anthem, and put it in an HRA into an account in the village's name. If you allotted everybody on the plan two thousand dollars, single four thousand for employee plus one or thirty five hundred for family, and that's that's basically funding it back to what they're used to the five hundred single thousand employee spouse and fifteen hundred family. That would cost you nine thousand dollars. So that sixteen thousand annual savings by increasing that deductible, you would only need nine thousand of that to fund the HRA in one year's time. So you're saving 
7536 right off the bat in one year's time. Now, the, the probability of every single person on your plan to include spouses and children are going to end up using their deductible in one year's time is very unlikely. Um, usually we look at about 65, so we can see some of that. 45 to 65%. Well, what you want to do is your deductible exposure down here at the bottom where it says 100% deductible exposure. If every single person on the plan gotcha. right now used that 9000 you have set aside, you'd still save $7,500 from what you're paying today on the current plan you have. Melissa, can I say, because I heard the question over here, Council only pays half of my insurance. That's it. The rest that she's talking about is paid by the board of public care. So either way, if you were to, I mean, and you can play with the funding. The good thing about an HRA is it's your money. You set the rules. As long as what you do for one, you do for all. Um, you can increase that funding, you can decrease that funding. You can say, oh, I'm going to give everybody a $1,000 deductible, and I'll, we'll pick up 1500 But if we went through this third with everything you've talked about, the end result is an employee is going to go to the hospital, they're going to see the same $500 out of his out of pocket expense that they've seen in the past, mm -hmm. correct? Because correct. we're funding the other differential, correct. and we're still saving money by funding that differential versus staying with the policy we're currently with. Correct. Okay. Now, there is an extra step in there. They would have to file, they have to wait for their explanation of benefits to come in the mail, just as they do today. Right. And they would have to fill out a one-page claim form and submit it to us, and then we would, um, and that's another option. Third-party administrators usually are the best to um, handle that, so it's a lot of um, paperwork. Um, I don't know if you'd want to take on the paperwork or you would like to take on the paperwork, but we do work with third-party administrators in the Ohio area, as well as Bergman Flower has, uh, now has their own TPA department. Um, for current clients, we offer the first year free administration, and then after that, it's five dollars per employee per month. So it would be fifteen dollars a month after the first year to administer that for you. Um, and then that also takes HIPAA off of your lap, so you're not having sure. people bring you your explanation of benefits and say, "Write me a check." But um, so they would they would mirror your medical plan. They would if Anthem approved it subject to the deductible, then the third party administrator would then reimburse as long as they attach the EOB that shows that. So, um, and then of course I would definitely want to come and sit down with each employee and explain that. And it's different, and um, you know, but it definitely you know you set the rules. So if you want to keep that five hundred dollars deductible, what they're used to, I believe it's a five hundred. Um, Exactly. So if, if by the end of the year one person hit their deductible but the other two have not and you have that money left over, next year you don't have to refund for those two that didn't touch the money and the third person you just have to refund for that. Huh. Um, another thing is is you do not have to fund the 9000 you know, tomorrow. You can, what, my rule of thumb, it's whatever you want to put into the account that's set up to start it playing paying claims. Right. Well, what I would do, a good rule of thumb is take that 9000 and divide it by 12. Well, we're now in April um, 10 or 8. Divide it by that and just do a, a fraction of it up front. And then what will happen is as claims come through and are reimbursed, they will notify you we need a we need a check run or we need a we need a sweep into the account to put more money for the funds. But it would never be more than that nine thousand dollars or whatever the amount you allot for each employee to be funded, it would never be more than that. Because then once you've met that you've met that deductible, the, the carrier pays it 100% in one year's time. So, um, you know, unfortunately, given the medical conditions in the group, they're not awful. They're just, they're just prohibiting any other carriers from lowering it, offering a better rate. These figures represent the 50% uh, cost that this council is responsible for, or total cost? This is total cost. So if it's 50%, I can tell you... So you guys pay 50% of yours? Okay. So which plan, and I can tell you exactly what her premium would be. I'm not sure. I was just curious. It would be, well, it would be, if you want to look at the, say, the far right column, the 2500 HSA plan. Oh, which plan is different? Oh. I'd say the third one. The third one with the co-pays? Uh -huh. Okay. That one. Because currently, right now, you're paying... Oh, wait a minute, though. You priced that one we looked at on the back. That was the fourth column, wasn't it? Where we were at the 2849. Yeah, but you're still saving. If you went with that third column, if you flip back one more cost analysis back, 
This one right here. Where it says 2500 with co pays. This plan right here, if you flip it. It's right on there, there too. Worst case scenario if everybody, if you allotted everybody the amount back to their normal deductible, you'd still it's save $200. Yeah. So the, you know, the, the, the object is not to send money to a carrier for a benefit your employees right. are or are not using. Well, we're going to send a bunch of money to the carrier and never see it again. Instead, retain some of that money and keep it with you. If it's needed, it's there. If not, it retains with the village. So um, currently, the premium you're paying now half of is nine six. It's going to nine sixteen fifty four. If you guys pay half of that um, on the twenty five hundred plan with copays. It'll go to 617. No, I'm sorry, that's without the copays. With the copays, it'd be 750. Without the copays, it's 617. So far, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you, guys. Um, again, you. that first page after the cover page has all my contact information. If you think of anything after I leave, you um, an email <coughs> me. I'll be happy to help you in any way I can. Um, now, I will say, if you want to do a plan change. Um, we work with Anthem pretty good. Technically, 4-1 is gone, and by now you'd be looking at a 5-1. If you do want to do a plan change, I would say let me know this week. I can try to get an exception for a 4-1 and get them to back it, change the plan back to 4-1 and get going that way. Um, the TPA setup is pretty easy. Um, if you do go with the plan with co-pays, of course, um, they wouldn't. You, know, you probably wouldn't have anything right away. If you were going to go with that far right plan with where everything's subject to the deductible, we'd want to get the TPA set up pretty quickly because it would no longer be co case Everything would be subject to the deductible. So we'd want to get that implemented pretty quickly. But um, if, it, if, you can, if you want to do it this week for a 4-1, we could probably push that through for you. All right. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I'm going to work public there. And well, my question to council is, on James Cap there, if we decide what we decide to do on our part of the other employees, will you automatically go through that for her half, or is there going to be a, you know, would there be complications there if you decide to go one way and you both feel there may be a better way for her half? Now, unfortunately, before, before you, I don't want to interrupt, but this is one group plan. So you guys, it, what you, you know, we have to do, unfortunately, unless you have more than 10 employees, they won't let you allow you to do a dual option. So, so one Jeff plan has to be said decided on. Whatever the Board of Public Affairs says, then council will have to go on the back with their happen. Yeah, right? or, yeah, yeah. And, and the plan that you have is as large a pool plan as you've got, that you can't go out anywhere else. To, we did go out. To, to grab any more numbers. We did. Say. You went as far as you could go yes. with the number of yeah, participants given, that mm -hmm. you could do for us. Exactly. Yes, we took your uh, we took your applications with all the medical conditions, ages, genders, everything on it. Took it out to the various carriers. Um, we quoted Health Pool, the Ohio Township Association pool, which is now PEBA, mm -hmm. um, and came back with you know unfortunately none of the rates are better. Yeah. Um, so given you know given the information, the rates are what they are. Due to the conditions in the group, so. Um, but you know, again, the, the the best thing is is raise that deductible a lot because even in future years, if more conditions come, you know, arise or come on board, you've got a higher deductible and you can go even higher. Um, actually, coming down the pipe with PEBA, the Public Employee Benefit Association, where we're pooling all public entities in Ohio, um, it's actually going to end up. Right now, the highest in small group under under 99 lives, the highest deductible you can get in the marketplace is a 5,000 to 10,000 deductible. People will be offering as high up to a, a 20,000, 40,000. Wow. Employer can do underlying funding, um, share the risk with the employees, and it's it's just it's a concept where you retain as much as you can with your group of your money mm -hmm. and give the carrier as little as possible. 
Um, and you know, just, it's kind of a way to self-insure yourself. In the small group market, unfortunately, we don't have the, the tricks that the larger self-funded companies get. Um, so we're kind of tweaking it and mirroring the, the self-funded plans out there. And it's, it's one of the ways we see to help with the rising cost of the premiums. I think what Rob was also referring to about a year ago as mayor and representative of the Mayor's Association, that we do something like this for all public county employees, period, throughout the county. Yeah. We even have one carrier, yeah. period. When, when, what happened there is so some of the other villages. Not that this would be to their benefit, which, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's silly because I think it would have saved everybody. Well, it, and that's the, well, and that's the thing. At, at the start of a pool, that's great. Um, but the problem, again, a problem with pooling and pooling everybody together in you know, just one county. And this just happened in the Columbia County over, um, on the Pennsylvania border. Um, the county pooled everybody, the engineer's office, the health department, the cities, right. the villages, everybody pooled together. And for the first couple of years, it was great. Everybody had a low rate. Everybody, um, of course, it was a very large plan, so they were self-funded and they were taking on, um, they had a, what they call a spec plan where they purchased a $100,000 coverage plan that if you know something major were to come across the county pays that first hundred thousand and then the carrier picks up the shock after that um, but then they equal, equally spread out that risk well unfortunately there's a heart transplant out there that um, you know that one person at the county is wrapping up all these claims and now the claims run out is being spread to all the different divisions and now all those divisions are going get me out of here I don't want my groups healthy I don't want to pay for this and unfortunately, that's what happens. We all get older, we all get sicker, <laughs> conditions arise, and then the healthy people go, well, I can get it cheaper over here, and they jump ship. And that's the problem with pooling. Uh, you know, that's why, you know, PIVA, we're trying to pool everybody together. But again, um, the reason we're pooling this way is because you can't get anything less than a $2,500 deductible with PIVA. There's no 100% plans. There's no... Copay plans. It's, it's all the high deductibles pooling. How long is it going to work? I don't know. Um, but you know, again, it's 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 worth a try. Um, it's it, people have tried it, and then of course that's just what happens because everybody gets older, everybody gets sicker, cancer pops up, um, heart attacks happen, and you know, now you are now you are part of it. you are with Anthem. You are part of a health pool. Um, you are grouped together with other small businesses in your area. And so far, Health Pool is the one pool that hasn't blown up and really spread the risk. Um, when that happens, other pools are created and everybody is shaped it up. Um, so that's it's really, you know, the, the best answer is raise up that deductible, self insure yourself. Keep that premium low, give the carrier as less money as you can, and self insure yourself. And then if you do have a shock claim where there's a cancer or where there's a heart transplant, you have a $2,500 deductible and the carrier picks up the rest. And you know, you know, it's like your stop loss. Your stop loss is $2,500. Your stop loss is $5,000. You know, whatever plan you choose, and then the carrier picks, picks up the rest. So, good. All right. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you, you don't have to stay. I'm going to leave you something here. In the meantime, I think the two hills would be meeting with the other employees. I did meet with the county commissioners today on the same issue. They're looking at it from the back on the train. We don't like you on the mayor meeting that you have discussed a year ago. Absolutely. I did meet with them this morning. They're going to look at maybe something in this school system, too. Or even the, all the townships and there's all the municipalities in the county to maybe work with us together so one and the other can help each other. So that's on the table with them also. So I do want to make you aware of that. <laughs> because, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I can take it. Everybody under one way here in the I think it's a great thing. I did it. I got some. Goodies. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> there you go, exactly. <laughs>
Thank you very much. I'll be back in touch as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is Ms. Susan. Um, I really don't have anything to say okay. this evening. I know, I'm trying to get your last name in here. That's all right. Thanks. Um, basically, I just came in case you had any questions about what we talked about last month. And then basically just say there's no reason for anybody to be in a hurry okay. to make any decisions. Well, I wanted the Finance Committee to meet right. and get everything together here so we can take a good look at where we're going to be. Because, Probably you know, next year we are going to get that again. Right. And so, Ohio Public Works Commission will give you two years to spend this money. Okay. So we still have till really the end of the year. Okay, I know get some pressure here from Kelly. Well, I think so Ken, Ken would like an answer simply because then she could give the money to somebody else. They could spend it this year, and she doesn't have to modify her grant agreement. Okay. She can modify her grant agreement. It's a matter of a little bit of paperwork, and they can extend it into next year to let somebody else use the money. Okay. It wouldn't be the first modification. It doesn't affect how much money they get or how much money they don't right. get. They don't get a black mark by their name. It has nothing to do with that. It's just about... She doesn't want to have to do a little bit of extra paperwork. So I wouldn't okay. let her push you to make a decision, and I wouldn't feel pushed to make a decision because I know you've got some things going on that you can figure out, and I wouldn't just make a snap decision and then be sorry. I'd let it ride. You know, nobody's pressuring you from the state. Right. You know, you've got time to make a decision. We wouldn't have to do this till next year. And that's really just what I wanted to say was that don't feel pressured or pushed okay. to make any kind of decision. Like I said, I want to get with the finance committee sure. first and hit the books here and see yeah. where we're going to be going this year, but also next year. Right, right. Because and it's and going to happen too, you know, right. because we are going to be cut, right. so. Right. And I, that's really all I wanted to say was just, okay. if you had any questions since Jane wasn't here, you know, I wanted to be available to answer them. And then the other Absolutely. thing I just wanted to say is don't feel pressured to make a okay. decision because I will. Sure. Right. You know, to me, you take all the time that you can to figure out what's best for new pairs all the way around, and then at, when you're ready, we'll make a decision. Okay. That's Thank you very much. much. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Before I go on any further, I also have this letter from the Chamber of Commerce. New Pairs Area, area, <coughs> new pair, new pairs area Chamber of Commerce, pre Expo, Saturday, May 5th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Valley Session. Lodge open to the public for admission. Our mission statement to promote your enterprise and advance the business community of New Paris and surrounding areas. Our thanks go out to everyone who has supported the expo in the past. However, we need your continued support with this year's expo. We encourage all sectors of business and community to participate. Home, social, retail, manufacturing, especially new, are all invited. With your help, we will positively impact our community. See you at the expo. Solid. Like to see anybody at least kind of glad to see what's going on, see what other businesses are going on within the community. Also, I was approached by Officer Clay Hurd. He has put a sort of an organization together of what they're wanting to do and are doing. And they have talked to Mr. McMahon. Is uh, they're going to they raise some money here to try to refurbish the basketball courts up at the old school and maybe possibly some shelters or some playground equipment and. Uh, He's already, like I said, he's already held a softball tournament and several things and raised a considerable amount of money. And uh, before he approached the council and the Chamber of Commerce, he just wanted to let us know that he's doing this. And I think that's great. I think it's fantastic. Anything to help the community and help the kids and have them a place to play. And maybe that's something we may want to look at. I know we talked about that before with Mr. McMahon, about possibly maybe uh, getting that area maybe separating that off and get some kind of release or maybe purchasing or do whatever, but... We need to know. put some trash cans out there. Yeah, who's going to take care of it? You going to pay for it? Am I going to pay for it? Right, it's county going to commit to I don't have any kids that use well, that. There you go. But I have picked it up. Well, that's good. That's good. I was going to contact Whitey and see if he couldn't put some... That what used to be the corners of our mission Trash cans. The only problem is, is we get right back, we're going to pick it up and we'll get right back in that scrap again where people taking down their personal trash and garbage. Yeah. You're right. Oh, no, these are just barrels. You know, well, that's what we got into that before. Not, well, that was because but anyway, the dumpsters were there. Anyway, like I'm saying, it's, it's nice to see that he's trying to help out the community, help the kids, and have them a place. I see a lot of kids out there playing ball. So I, and I, I think, think it's great, great too, but 
we may run into some other sanitation issues too. Well, as that's far as down goes. as far as the building goes. I'm not talking about that. Huh? Yeah, but there, I don't want any conflicts there. Right? Absolutely, and uh, I know, like I said, he's been in contact with Mr. McMahon. And he has his blessings, naturally, but uh, we'll see how things go. I just want you to be aware of that and let everybody know what's going on. Next on the agenda is uh, committee reports, safety. Police Department handled 151 calls for service in March. Uh, 22 reports made seven arrests, issued six citations, 21 each and found in three vehicles. Uh, last month I made a comment that we were busy at 136 calls for service and we had 151. The fat one, so I'm going to take a comment. But we are busy. <laughs> Absolutely. Not, not the major, just the common everyday calls right. we deal with, the domestic stuff like that. Or, yeah. It's getting warmer, things for now. Campers are coming in town. Yeah. Yeah. Campground opened up to 15, but they had people in there for the last two weekends. So. Okay. <coughs> I will ask Nick, uh, you and Frank, get with the chief and maybe set up a meeting with all the officers so that you can have a sit down, talk with them, and see what's going on. And, since you are over the safety committee, and then uh, that way you kind of feel what's going on here. Okay. Because yeah. sometimes from time to time, if somebody does file a complaint against the police department, it's up to you to uh, take care of the hearing and, and uh, make decisions on what you feel is right in the right move. Okay. Billy? No. Streets? No. Did you worry about that? Lights, the DPNL off notices, I believe they're out. I know I got mine at home. I got mine too. Absolutely. Mine. Now, did you not tell us that if you do nothing, you will automatically be signed up? Is that correct? That's like the waiver stands. That's because of the proper waiver. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything else on the lights? <laughs> Finance, Rick? No. Sanitation, Mary Jane? No, I haven't done anything. Well, we're talking okay, about um, <coughs> There's some places that need it. Uh, I'm kind of waiting around for a new ordinance to go into that. I will say that uh, under, the, under the sanitation, we have removed the trees. Greg has removed the trees from the creek down there. And uh, we've got uh, a lot of work for a very reasonable price. James Byler, a little over 500. Uh, or Greg and then Billy in the back <coughs> to get the trees out of the creek down there. So, 500? Yes. Okay, but we agreed to it had to be 5,000, right? So, it came out pretty good. We agreed to 3,500, and they did, they give us a large number. They just said they would do the best they could with that number, and so, more than reasonable, $500. Yeah. Yeah, he went $500 to take my tree down, so. So they, uh, they did this to everyone in the village of great service. So they need to keep that in their mind. They need like more work done because there was potential of a disaster there with spring rains coming. So they did a good job. Thank you. Okay, I am going to, uh, at this time, do an ordinance, a uh, second reading on ordinance 2012 natural 4. I'd like permission from the council to read this by. Five only. Yes, that's acceptable. Okay. <coughs> ordinance 2012 04, ordinance enacting an exterior property maintenance code in Village of New High, being ordained by the Council of Village of New Paris, Broken and Ohio. With, because of the need to protect the value of the property in the village, protect the quality of life in the village, and protect health, safety, and welfare of the residents of the Village of New Paris, this ordinance shall take place in the effect of this from or after its earliest date after passage. Nothing on plan. EPA, Ralph, do you have anything? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, got a couple of things. We have one of the wells for now uh, for the repair. <coughs> and uh, was going to make the council aware of that. As uh, anybody said anything about the traffic that's going in and out there, the, you know, mm -hmm. concern, number one. And number two, why this bill's going to cost about $10,000 for the one well. 
We've got two more wells that we need to do the same thing to in the near future over the next year or two years. I'd like to make the public aware that, you know, I realize that our funding is <coughs> your funding, but this town is uh, getting low on funding for everything with these, you know, thirty thousand dollars over the next three years for maintenance on the water. Uh, it's a pretty pricey deal. So hopefully somewhere along the line we can get some help either increasing the water rates, uh, taxation, whatever it's going to take, the public needs to be aware that the same points you folks have been pushing here for the other things that's going on in the village, our water and sewer department uh, is running the problems too. And uh, we're looking at $30,000 over the next three years. Is that so the builders are pulling up on it? Is that what that is? The iron and magnesium, yeah. that type of stuff. It's uh, nothing that we haven't dealt with in the past, but here we are at a point where our funding and economics is the way it is. Why uh, we're looking at a very high expense over the next three years to maintain this three well. I mean, we've got the facts of the water and sewer in the, in the county, as far as I'm concerned. And personally, I like to keep it that way, but it's going to be a good price. But also, right in the season, season again, uh, I'm not supposed to be able to bat on that. Okay, you're not since you're not even, since you guys are the ones who put these in, right? <laughs> Twelve years ago. Yeah, obviously if it's a maintenance issue, there's not much I can do. I know. Do. Yes, so maybe there's issues. But, but, I don't know but, whether but there's a, a couple of things I do want to look into just okay. on the side there. Okay. But okay. I didn't want to make council aware of what's going on. Okay. Also, did you fill the seat? Did you uh, fill the seat of Nick's? I'm assuming that Mr. Smallwood is going to take it. Uh, he didn't, I haven't contacted him to talk yes. about this thing he brought up. And as far as I know, everything's going on this gentleman. So as far as I know, that the seat will be filled for the next year. Okay. And usually we ask council to give their blessing on their decision for um, filling that position. And Kevin Smallwood has agreed to take Nick's position on the Board of Public Affairs. So uh, I would move that we <coughs> give our blessing to Kevin Smallwood and Mr. Smallwood. Is there a second on that? I'll second. Can I have a roll call, please? Nick. Yes. Joe. Yes. Jeannie. Yes. Frank. Yes. Rick. Yes. Mary Jane. Yes. Okay. Resolution on this. We already did a second reading. Old business apple fest. Does anybody have any other questions? Bonnie's contacted me about the apple fest down on Main Street. I know she's contacted all the people down through the block. Everybody's done all about it. So, well, you're all on Main Street. I own the apple fest. Well, that's true. You do. I forgot. I'm sorry. Go ahead and contact me. So, we have one resident who's not happy with it. Who? No, I. Okay. I don't care about the Jean Okay. <laughs> okay. She can't she can't ask and I'll say no. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll make a motion that we approve the closed main street of the Aquifest. All right, so okay. first block. Second that roll call. Okay. Rick? Yes. Mary Jane? Yes. Frank. Yes. Jean? Yes. Nick? Yes. Joe. Yes. Also, I have what we take off from the HIT Foundation. Uh, Home is the foundation along with the Community Action Partnership and the Metro Preble Met Metropolitan Housing Authority <coughs> have been appointed by the Preble County Commission to prepare a consolidated plan to address the affordable housing needs of Preble County. An important part of this process is to seek input from all Preble County communities. <coughs> Attached are surveys and prepaid return envelopes we're asking that all council members and appropriate staff to a choice complete and return the survey. If additional surveys are needed, you may copy them or contact us for copies and envelopes. So I have. I appreciate everybody, but take one of these and fill them out and send it in if you would. The um, actual survey is with the letter. Yeah. Well, what? With underneath the letters. Okay. Yeah, that's, just, that's just an envelope thing. Sure, I'll send it. Duh. Send it in the Okay. That works. Next meeting will be May 7th, 2012 at 7 p.m. 
Does anybody else have anything else that they'd like to bring up? I got some new business. Um, is there an ordinance on people working on their cars only in their yard? I don't believe there's an ordinance on uh, letting them work on their cars. I mean, what can you do about it? Uh, Helena called me tonight, and her neighbor, he's rebuilding trucks, pickup trucks. And he uses a body grinder and this and that. And she had company yesterday. And they couldn't sit out because this guy was so loud. They lived right across the street from him. They went in the living room. They couldn't talk in the living room because he was working on his cars. He does not have a garage. He has a side yard. And that's where he works. Is that kosher? Yes, sir. There's nothing in the local ordinance as well. Is he working well, on his own cars or something? Uh, well, he works on his own and he works on somebody else's. But it's kind of annoying when you're trying to have company and you can't have the doors open. This guy's grinding and running a. Well, we don't have a noise ordinance. Well, we have a noise ordinance. You have an ordinance. But it's with this. Oh, my God. That's, yeah, that's kind of. <laughs> Yeah, you cannot do this during right. hours of if it was at twelve o'clock at night. I'd say, yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, he it's shuts it off up. about nine o'clock, nine thirty. It but it's depends on how long it's there, and it's and there how, all day for weeks on time. Like, is it like a demo thing, or no? It's just a truck that needs maybe lifted up. You know, put on bigger tires. Uh, no, no I'm the reason why he has to do it 24 hours a day. I don't see you doing it 24 hours a day. But he, he well, he does it at least 12, we'll say. Really? And, and his, the people across the street can't have company because his noise is too noisy. I know it's like a thing. It, it is aggravating now. I don't think he's it. breaking it. Oh, no. The only thing I tell Helena is go get your stereo, turn it up loud when that kid's supposed to be taking a nap. Tip for tap. I say roll down to her walking across the street and talking to him. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've got to help you with your mind. Uh, I'm not going to make some noise. Clarence, right. has she ever called you? Yeah, Chris. Oh, Chris, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know the place you're talking about. It's across the street from John, and he works during the day. During and, the week, and he works at night. He works on his cars on the weekends. He and you can't talk to anybody down there. No, if, if it's an issue, the late at night calls. We'll go down there. We'll shut him down. The way I see it, we have some there. I had everybody not doing it all business. It's a zone for business. It's not zone for business, is it? No, but he's not doing it as a business. He it's is his doing it. Pickup truck. He's doing it for somebody else. That's a business. From what right? I understand, it's his pickup truck there in the side yard that you're talking about. If I can keep an eye on it, if another vehicle shows up there, I can ask him if he's working okay, on it. Okay, keep an eye on it then. Because it's aggravating. I sat down there with Helena the other day and we could not talk because he was busy running a grinder and it's just Okay. Just tell her if it's loud, call us, we'll come down there, we'll check it out. If it's loud, we'll shut it down. Okay. I'll tell her to call you. Okay, if there's nothing else, then I may like to have a motion to go out now. Ralph, excuse me, I forgot to ask you something while we go. Uh, we have a problem up there going back into the well area with a power utility line coming down too low. We like to never got the equipment in to work on these wells. And just wondered if there was anything that you could do as far as contacting the uh, Century Link because I think it told to me that it was the Century Link line and then that's supposed to be 14 feet. There's a foot high. Is there some way that we can use a letterhead from the village to contact Century Link to get that? Because we had an off line. We had about an inch clearance to get the equipment in there, and they were not anywhere near 14 feet. And I guess what Brian had told me that they had been contacting.
contacted about this issue in the past and haven't done anything about it through the employees of CenturyLink, but I don't know whether CenturyLink uh, management has been notified of the problem. But there is an issue there that we have a piece of equipment in there, we'll never make it. Right. Okay. It's very unsafe. Uh, we really had trouble getting the one piece in that we did just to do the work that we did uh, last week in there. But I wanted to address that with either to try to contact CenturyLink to see if we could get that car line raised up. And I don't think it's going to be an element of electricity. I think it is a good thing. So it's a way for you to do it. We don't want to hurt somebody to hold down and hurt somebody because I realize that if somebody goes in there and tears it down, it's not their responsibility because it is too low and we're right here. And, uh, but I don't want you know complications of snowball effect on the county. Okay. So okay. The to do we'll, get that. we'll get together on that. We'll get together on that. We'll get together on that route and we'll contact them. All right. Thank you. Just so we get that taken care of. Anything else? Uh, okay. If not, I need a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. Roll call. Frank? Yes. Jeannie? Yes. Joe? Yes. Mary Jane? Yes. Nick? Yes. Henry? Yes. Thank you very much for letting me. We'll see you next.